So in three, two. Good afternoon. The first item is a presentation on the preliminary design for Scotts Branch Elementary School's replacement. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixit and staff. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Harvey. My name is Pete Dixit. I'm Executive Director for Facilities Management and Strategic Planning. Uh, the project that we are talking about today has been approved by the board as part of the capital improvement program. Uh, this is preliminary design review for Scott's Branch Elementary School. And the, the, the design review does not require any board's approval. So during the completion of design, we have worked closely with uh, uh, the BCPS administration, and we'd like to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Murrow and um, team members of Dr. Basil McComas and so many other departments that help us prepare the design. We also like to acknowledge our internal team members. With me is Merrill Plate, who is the manager of construction improvement, and uh, Mike Archbold, who is the architectural brain and manager of planning for this project, and Mark Cord, who's the project manager. So with that, I would give it to Mr. Dave Rescia, who is the um, manager or uh, for this project from JMT and head of the design team. So Dave, uh, you can start now. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, my, my name's Dave Risha. I'm the vice president in charge of our K-12 design studio. And with me is uh, Bill Novian, who is our project manager for the, uh, for the project. Thank you for the opportunity to present the preliminary design for Scotts Branch Elementary School. I have a pretty brief agenda. We're going to talk about some general information, some existing conditions, some of our project goals, uh, the project location, site conditions, the basic building organization. We have some renderings and then we'll open it up for some questions. So the Scotts Branch is located in, of course, Baltimore County. It's on the west side uh, near Randallstown. It is north of Liberty Road and east of Rolling Avenue. When you look at uh, areas around the school uh, in one and two mile radiuses, uh, these are the elementary schools that adjoin uh, Scotts Branch Elementary um, within the one mile and two mile radius. And these are the middle schools that uh, adjoin uh, Scotts Branch. This is the existing school building uh, built in 1960, uh, done in the modernist style uh, of that time. It uh, features a lot of horizontal lines. There are projected uh, roof lines uh, extenuating the, uh, the horizontality of the building. Uh, a lot of ribbon windows uh, that extend horizontally, uh, both in their, their size and their, their length. This is the front entrance. Uh, right here is the actual front entrance underneath this canopy. And back behind all this is the uh, admin area that sort of watches the front door. The main uh, area to the, to the left is the existing gym, and this is a kindergarten addition that was done uh, in the 70s. These are some other views of the existing school upper left. The uh, glass area to the left of the tree is the cafeteria and the kitchen area to the right. The upper right hand photo is a, is a picture of the classrooms uh, that are in the courtyard with the relocatables that are currently there. The uh, lower right hand side is an overall picture of the front of the the building and the lower left is the facade that faces uh, rolling road again you see the horizontality of the uh, the windows and the extent of the glass so in general information again this is a replacement elementary school for the for the originally constructed school in 1960 
the state rated capacity is increasing from currently 469 to 728. The square footage of the building is increasing from just under 57,000 square feet to just over 104,000 gross square feet. There is one uh, existing regional program that's special education. And this project includes the blue Blueprint for Maryland's Future, the Early Childhood Education portion. So project goals. Supporting the 21st century learning environments, we have uh, collaborative learning areas at each grade level and shared extending learning areas between classrooms from grades two through five. Uh, so our sustainable design strategies include achieving two green globes, which is equivalent to the uh, lead silver. Um, we are looking at um, enhanced student environment for maximizing daylighting and views and enhanced indoor air quality, all helping the learning environment. And we are designing this project to be uh, solar ready for the future. Our safety and security objectives. We want to provide a high visibility of the main entry from the administrative suite, which currently doesn't exist. Um, we're creating separate bus loops and student drop off to keep separate the pedestrian and uh, traffic circulation patterns so that the children uh, arriving and leaving school are, are safe. Uh, pedestrian and friendly access points throughout the whole building uh, with, site, with sidewalks and, and lighting. Again, main design features, uh, the blueprint for Maryland's future, the early childhood education has a big impact on the, the floor plan and the size of the building. Um, we are uh, creating an outdoor learning classroom as, as part of the program. And through the design process of the site, we were able to pick up an additional ball field uh, for the project. So this is an aerial view of the of the existing site. You see uh, Liberty Road all the way to the left. Tonmore Road is just below that. Uh, Rolling Road to the top of your screen and Church Lane to the uh, right hand side of your screen. North North is to the right in this in this case. So this is the existing site. The existing school. And then a more graphic depiction of the of the site. Again, Pondmore Rolling Church Lane, existing school, main entry off of Tonmore, a bus loop right off of Tonmore, a student drop off to the side of the building. Again, accessed off of Tonmore. Parking in two areas. The modular classrooms, there are four in the courtyard, uh, as I spoke about before, and there are three on the corner of Tonmore and Rolling Road. There are two existing playgrounds. There's an existing uh, recreation activity center in the middle of the site run by uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, this particular facility poses uh, a lot of challenges in terms of fitting in a new building in the existing site uh, with that existing structure being there. There's an existing uh, hard surface court. And then two ball fields on the north portion of the site adjacent to Church Lane. The white outlines you see are the proposed uh, school, the, the replacement school. Uh, we'll get into that. So again, a graphic depiction of the new school, the existing uh, recreation center, and the site layout. So we have Tonmore, Rolling Road, and Church Lane. The white areas to the left indicate the existing school, the, the modulars, and the parking lots. So we have the new school located on the north portion of the site. The existing recreation center. The main entry is off of Church Lane. Uh, we are changing the, the 
the orientation of the building away from the commercial uh, buildings that are uh, between Tonmore and Liberty Road. This uh, new entry will now face the residential areas adjacent to Church Lane. There's a bu bus and walker entrance on the opposite side of the building due to site constraints. Uh, the, this particular uh, entry exit will only be used for arrival and dismissal. All visitors will enter in the main entrance off of Church Lane. New bus loop will come in off of Rolling Road. Uh, two parking lots extending across the building. The, the one at the lower portion uh, is adjacent to the service side of the building where the cafeteria and the utilities are. Deliveries and service. There's hard surface play courts that extend uh, through the, through the uh, site. Play, two playgrounds. And uh, the athletic fields where the existing building were. And again, as uh, stated earlier, we were able to pick up uh, one extra ball diamond and actually have a, a very good sized uh, multi-purpose field adjacent to that third ball diamond. So uh, the, the site work worked out quite well in terms of the uh, activity spaces for the, uh, the students and the community. So student drop off comes in off a of church lane, swings around, parents swing around and, and drop off and leave uh, via church lane. There's queuing for approximately 32 cars uh, for students to be picked up and, and dropped off. Circulations for the bus, again, coming in off a of rolling road. They uh, would discharge or, or load uh, adjacent to the school. There's queuing for nine, nine buses on that, uh, that loop there. Walkers come in from several directions. Uh, from the north, uh, coming in off of Church Lane, they will avoid the crossing over of any uh, vehicular activities, come in on sidewalks uh, to enter in the main uh, entrance to the building. From the south, again, coming through, coming through sidewalks, uh, avoiding the bus loop and coming in the rear entrance to the building. Now to show a little bit about the building. Again, because because of the slides and the size of the building, this the, the building has been rotated uh, 90 degrees just to keep your orientation uh, clear. So north now is at the top of the screen. I'll run through these uh, very quickly so you can see the layouts of the, the, the floor plan. This is the first floor. So you have the main entrance again to the north. You have the bus and walker entrance again for only arrival and dismissal. It's at the south side of the building. Separation of public and academic spaces. The, uh, the, the two entries are joined by a large um, avenue, large circulation space between the two, which accesses both the academic and the public side. Elevator to get to the second floor because the lower the, the lower wing is a two story wing. Outdoor learning areas uh, accessed from the learning commons and the uh, the lower school wing. Administration at the north side of the building overlooking the main entrance and different faculty areas throughout the building. Health suite located right next to the admin area. And the guidance suite again located right near the main entrance and the admin area. Centralizing all of those services. There's pre kindergarten and preschool as part of the blueprint and the kindergarten areas are in the, are in the other wing uh, due to uh, site constraints. That's the regional uh, special education program. Learning Commons is sort of centrally located 
uh, to the school. Again, classrooms, uh, first and second grades on the first floor of the two story wing. There are extended learning areas at the second grade classrooms. Collaborative learning areas for all grade levels on this this first floor. And staff collaboration and support spaces. Physical education. Some rec and park service areas. Dining and kitchen. And instrumental and vocal music. Those areas are sort of separate from everything for both uh, noise uh, constraint and also to give them good access to the the auditorium or the, the stage platform for performances. The second floor, third and fifth grade classrooms. Again, extended learning areas between them. Collaborative learning areas at each grade level. These are some 3D renderings of the building. This is an aerial view looking uh, from from the north at the main entrance above the building looking down main entrance being being here this is a, a articulation of that main corridor that runs through the building and then the bus loop in the back uh, for that for that rear entry it's a ground level view of the of the main entry large horizontal canopy uh, with the, the horizontal windows at the admin area giving a uh, good view for security uh, and observation of the main entry. Uh, what we tried to do with this uh, aesthetic of the building is to pick up on that, that the original modernist uh, look of the building with some projected uh, roof lines, keeping the horizontality of the original building in mind as the, uh, the forms of this new interpretation uh, has been worked through. So the same view of the front sort of from the side, you begin to see the service areas on the left hand side of the building as you turn the corner uh, down the, the smaller parking lot. And again, the articulation of that main main card or running through the building. It's the rear entry of the building. We tried to keep the vocabulary of that front entry. Uh, consistent moving through here to to although it's a it's not as much used it's still a, a main entry for m most of the children who come here by bus so we're going to keep the vocabulary and keep it uh, kind of special for for that end of the building the same the same kind of materials same kind of roof lines are used to to tie the two ends of the building together Another view of that uh, that rear entry with the gymnasium to the right of the entry. And the two story classroom wing to the to the left of that main entry and a small canopy there to to shelter the kids as they as they come and go from that uh, from that main side. View of the courtyard with the outdoor learning area, the the learning commons is the area in the middle here. Uh, that access is right onto that outdoor learning uh, area. Uh, and then there's a couple of other entrances on there. A view of the inside of a, of a typical classroom uh, from grades uh, two through five. Uh, windows to the, to the right. A casework to the left, 
whiteboards, projection, projection uh, LCD screens, and then this is the extended learning area here, which is uh, joins the two the two classrooms uh, that can be accessed from either side. So view one of the collaborative learning areas again where where children from the from each grade level can be can be joined uh, in this one area with with uh, teachers and assistants to look at special projects or look at special needs to to work through that uh, at each grade level this is a view of the gymnasium and the adjacent cafeteria with the the platform all the way at the end that's this this area up here and again there's a dividing wall that occurs across here that can separate those two spaces on normal daily use but can open it up for larger events and thank you and are there any any questions So if there are no questions, we thank you for your attention. We thank you for your review. Uh, and if any questions come to my, your mind later on, uh, feel free to send them to the superintendent's office. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, April 17, 2023. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person meeting otherwise all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Present. Ms. Henn? Present. Ms. Harvey, there are three members. Thank you. Ms. Faye, will you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Mr. Pedro Agosto? Present. Dr. Mary Boswell McComas? Present. Mr. Chris Hartlove? Present. Mr. Cameron Williams? 
Present. Dr. Jeffrey Holmes. Mr. James Corns. Mr. Pradeep. Present. That's it. Present. Ms. Allison Myers. Present. Dr. Melissa Wistad. Present. Mr. James Kerbeen. Present. Dr. Jess Grimm. Present. Ms. Michelle Sansbury. Present. Mr. Merrill Plate. Present. Ms. Melanie Webster. Present. Mr. Michael Archbold. Ms. Stephanie Stewart. Um, Mr. Mark Cole. If there are any additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Bashir James. Thank you. Dr. Heather Wooldridge. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Thank you, Ms. Faye. Uh, Mr. Hartlove, please state your name for the record and proceed with presenting JBO 7-710-21. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Uh, my name is Chris Hartlove. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Baltimore County Public Schools. Uh, the first contract uh, we have for today is JBO-710-21, Temporary Adult Assistance and Therapeutic Behavioral Aids. Uh, this contract modification will provide for the continued use of temporary adult assistance and therapeutic uh, behavioral aids for the Department of Special Education. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $2,370,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $3,520,000 with 10 awarded contractors approved by the board on May 4th, 2021. Are there any questions, committee members? I have one, Madam Chair. Ms. Hinn. Thank you. Um, so this is a significant increase in requested spending authority. Um, if staff could please speak to um, why this spending authority is needed over the original 1.1 million requested. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Oh, sorry, Dr. McComas. I'm not supposed to talk yet. <laughs> you are, <laughs> Allison. I was actually just going to invite you to share all the details, so thank you. <laughs> okay, is my camera not working, everyone? I've been having issues with it it's, today. It's frozen, but we can hear you okay. Okay, so I'm going to try to just start. So um, thanks for the opportunity to speak to this. Oh, there I am. Okay. Um, so yes, we are asking for a significant increase. Um, this is really due to um, the increased needs that have um, needs of our students that have serviced within our system. Um, and as this is a contract modification, so um, we have been using our temporary adult assistance and therapeutic behavioral aids, um, but it really is due to, um, it's a requirement for us to provide the service. Um, and we have seen an increase in the needs of our students over the last few years. Um, so we do have an increased number of students who um, need that additional person with them. It also helps um, when we, there have been times due to, um, vacancies and additional adult support positions. For ex we have both positions that are um, Baltimore County contractual employees who are um, additional adults. And then when we're unable to hire those, there are times that we are required to get, we still need that service. It's on an IEP. So we're then having to move to the temporary adult assistance through an agency. So this fills that need. Um, we also, there are times where it might be something that um, is, uh, we have students that um, may need a more restrictive setting um, and where we are currently with some of our non-public schools, the period of time to access our non-publics is 
um, taking a bit longer due to kind of the dynamics of our non-public school system as well. And we also will use these aids during that time. So there's a myriad of reasons, but um, we just have seen that an increased need for a variety, a variety of reasons. Okay, th thank you. I'm hearing a lot in your response. Um, and I know that vacancies have driven a lot of that need. And yeah. um, we've also heard of the need to compensate our adult assistants. Um, and if we're going to retain those individuals, we need to compensate them. So have we done a cost benefit analysis of increasing compensation over continuing to use um, these services? And have we looked at that? Um, is that something you could speak to? Because my concern is our costs are higher by using these services. And I would rather compensate our own additional adult assistance and fill those vacancies. So is that something um, that you can speak to? Or anyone on yeah, here can I, speak I, to? I, I'm sorry if I'm jumping ahead here. I think that that is a very, very good point. Uh, it's something that we should always be doing anytime we see a shift from employees to uh, contractors. We should be looking at you know at the efficacy of that and the uh, and the cost of that. So uh, that is something uh, we could look at, or and we should look at probably in our our next budget process um, to to uh, do an analysis. Contractual services aren't always a bad thing. Um, if it's uh, um, temporary, more temporary in nature, but as you become more and more dependent on them, if you can find employees to fill those uh, fill those needs, you're probably uh, going to be better off financially uh, to do that. So it's something we should be looking at and we will look at in the next process. Because obviously we, any... we want we want I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, Ms. Hen. I thought you had I'm sorry. your question. Please proceed. Thank you, ma'am. Um, we we obviously want our students receiving these services. Um, we know it's most cost effective and we want to bring these individuals in house. Um, I, I just want to emphasize what Mr. Hartlove already said that that's the goal, right? And it's to retain and compensate our our folks well. So I would just encourage us to continue to put forth those efforts and I will be supporting this contract, of course, to make sure our students have what they need. But it's it's disheartening to see that we need to to go outside to do so. But thank you for that that explanation. And if staff have any other information to share on this, I'm certainly all ears. Thank you. No, I don't. I I don't think so. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we would love to fill all our vacancies and not uh, necessarily need this um, contingency and flexibility contract as well. But we agree we can look into that, as Mr. Hartland said, as we move through the next budget cycle. Uh, uh, to Ms. Hen's point, I this contract ends in 2026 and where we might not be able to shift to a 100% in-house model, it would be uh, helpful for us to look at how we plan to reduce this contract over time to a goal of zeroing it out and having those staff, uh, to Ms. Hen's point, uh, on the BCPS S team. So thank you. I, sure. I will say that, you know, as we have folks come in, we use them temporarily. So as folks are hired within our system uh, into the additional adult support role, um, we we switch to those folks. We also have had some people come in through agency that we're then able to hire as our own um, additional adult support folks within Baltimore County. So that definitely is our goal to continue to um, hire our own people and not need to use the agencies. Um, but we do use this as um, as we need to to support fate for our students, which I appreciate you understanding. Are there any further questions? Madam Chair, may I ask a quick follow up question based on yes, that information? Absolutely. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, when we do have an agent bring someone on through an agency, mm -hmm. what is our waiting period or um, fee that we provide to that agency if we want to bring them on 
as an employee? And is that something that can be negotiated so that we can bring them on faster and or at a reduced cost when we bring them on? So I want to make sure I'm understanding your question. So if a person within an agency decides to be a Baltimore County employee, they apply through the typical uh, process for um, you know, applying to our system. So then they would go through the typical process of going through for fingerprinting and, and other things like that that we would do as far as our onboarding. So um, and then they are then they're hired at the rate of which we hire our additional adult support position, our folks with this additional adult support. So they're leaving the agency then. You have a person who may have been working with a specific student through the outside agency who decides to resign from their agency and apply to Baltimore County to become one of our additional adult support positions. Great, so there's the, no placement fee, finder's fee, placement fee, oh. anything of that nature or a waiting period before we can hire someone who comes to us through an agency. No, they would just apply and go through our typical HR process. Okay. This is Melanie Webster. I'm sorry, Hi, my Webster. camera is not working either. Um, we have specifically written this contract so that we do not pay any agency fees or finders fees or and there is no time frame lapse for these employees who want to be for these people who want to become employees. Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Webster. <clears throat> Certainly. Thank you. There being no further questions, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, please proceed with LKO-41419, Board Certified Behavior Analysts. Sure, uh, this, this is a uh, contract modification to provide for continued use of Board Certified Behavioral Analysts for the Department of Special Education. Approval is requested to increase the contract spending authority by 188 thousand four hundred dollars bringing the revised total contract spending authority to one million one hundred and eighty eight thousand four hundred dollars with three awarded uh, vendors uh, approved by the board on April 9th 2019. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will move on to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, please proceed with ARA-203-22 Materials of Instruction Discount Program. Sure, uh, this is another contract modification uh, and it will provide for the continued purchase of a wide range of classroom instructional materials and educational products for the Department of Academics. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by 1,085,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $2,235,000 with 16 awarded vendors approved by the board on August 9th, 2022. Um, the majority uh, I shouldn't, shouldn't say the majority, but uh, uh, these are used um, in a in a large manner uh, by the uh, community schools program. Are there any questions? I have one, Madam Chair. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hartlove, the funding source for this is operating budget and grants. Do we know the the breakdown? Since, as you said, these are used by community schools program. Are some of these federally funded and do we know that breakdown? I don't have it unless Ms. Uh, uh, Webster has it. I don't have it at my fingertips or any of the other folks on the call. We certainly certainly something we could get for you. Right. Are they, has it are they restricted in any way? Do you know? Um, well, we do segmented. Uh, when you say that, because it's it's operating budget and and grants, so the grants would be restricted. When any, any grant funding that we uh, use would be restricted funding. Um, but I I believe the the majority of this is um, operating budget, general operating budget, general fund. Okay. So purchases would be um, able to be reported out on. Um, for the portion that would be restricted when purchases are made against this um, contract spending authority? Would we be able to segment those 
If the oh, funds yes. Are yeah, I, yeah, if you're you're asking to be able to get that breakdown, I believe so. I believe that that is the case that we can we can um, we can segment between um, unrestricted and restricted uses. Okay. For instance, for the um, community schools, as we had talked about in budget committee. Yes. For the concentration and poverty grants, as a, for an example. I can. Pro this is Melanie Webster. I'm sorry. I can provide information as far as what funding came through grants or what purchases came through grants and what purchases came through operating um, funds. I will see if we can divide the if we can look at the grant funds to divide that up more, but I'm not sure that's possible. So when and, and this is a more general question, um, I suppose when a purchase is made against a contract that is split, has a split funding source um, that is allocated when to to which funding source and how is that reported? At the time the purchase order is encumbered, it is encumbered to the different funding sources um, and then obviously paid from those funding sources upon receipt of the invoice. It's simply that the report that I we use does not break it down that far. OK, it, it would be helpful for the board to have that broken down, at least when grants are involved. Um, the budget committee has been discussing this to see where our grant funding is being used versus operating budget, especially when we've seen a trend of grants expiring to know or to be able to um, anticipate increased operating needs to make up for that loss of grant funds, if that makes okay, sense. I can, I can definitely divide it operating versus grant. I, I don't know how quickly I could divide the grant funding up further. No, that that's fine. It, it okay. would just be helpful to, to see that breakdown um, and to know for lifetime um, expenditures, how that that breakdown is being um, being spent. That's all. And Thank you. This is this is Dr. Whitstead. Um, just to explain to you on the grant end of it, the, as far as Title I or the community schools, we have a, a process before the purchase order is even um, encumbered that um, you know it has to be approved through a needs assessment and the, the staff in the Title I office have to approve it. So we have like processes before that happens for the grants, if that helps clarify anything for you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Wistad. Are there further questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, please present ARA-213-18 Elementary ELA Supplemental Interventional Materials. Sure, uh, this is another contract modification. Um, and it's uh, basic. It's not, there's no dollar amount involved here. Additional dollar amount. It's just uh, approval is requested to extend the contract for three months uh, with one awarded vendor <coughs> approved by the board on April 17, 2018. This would bring the new end date to 7-31-2023. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to contract JBO-701-23 Broker Services and Excess Workers' Compensation Insurance. Mr. Hartlove. Yes, this is a new competitively bid contract for broker services for excess workers' compensation insurance for the Office of Employee Absence and Risk Management. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $3,579,000. Are Dana, there any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm just going to say the awarded uh, 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 vendor is Alliant um, or Alliant. 
insurance services. I bet I misspelled that or mispronounced that. Alliant or alien. <laughs> I think it's alliant. Are there any questions? Madam Chair, I have one. Please proceed. Um, it would seem that this would be a service that we could enter into an agreement with Baltimore County, perhaps, um, through a cooperative arrangement. Is this something we've explored or that they've offered? Or is that not an option? This is uh, James Kerbeam. We were working with Baltimore County up until July 2013 and it split off. So that was an option, but it's not an option any further. Can, thank you, Mr. Kirby. Can you speak to why that's no longer an option? I'm not sure. I know that prior uh, to 2013, the county didn't even purchase excess insurance, which from a risk management standpoint, I would have some heartburn with. Um, we we're still dealing with claims prior to 2013 that we wouldn't have if we had an excess policy in place. But I'm not sure what happened back in 2013 as to why there was a split between the two. And and Ms. Hen, just to add on to that, I think actually this would be uh, advantageous for the county because our we have a larger workforce okay. than the county does, so we're gotcha. we're we would help to bring their costs down, not the other way around. Okay. And and how do these costs compare um, to our prior arrangement? Do we know? You can see Wait, the, uh, the you can see the lifetime prior contract expenditures oh, over 2.5 million, um, and I don't know if that is for a similar amount of time. Um, I want to make sure we're at we're comparing apples to apples, but um, well, just to give you a little background too, we're automatically having a savings by bidding out the contract the way we did. The mm -hmm. prior contract was a piggyback with Carroll County, mm -hmm. and they were compensating the insurance carrier at a 15% commission. So we were paying 15% of our premium to the broker. We negotiated a flat fee this time with Alliant for 65,000. So we've already saved uh, 30, about 34,000 per year on the broker fees just through this negotiation process. Nice. The second part of the contract is the actual insurance policy itself. So to buy insurance, you have to go through a licensed broker. You can't just purchase it yourself. So the remaining is what it's gonna cost based on our claims volume and our loss experience for the claims. Thank you. And that was with Carroll County government? Correct. The previous ICPA? Okay. Have we looked into or suggested to MABE um, offering this to see if we could reduce that even even we're further. too big to do the work comp through MABE. We're too big to do it through MABE. Right. They they wouldn't want to write our uh, work comp exposure. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all I had. Are there any further questions? Dr. Ms. Harvey. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Considering that we drifted away from the county in 2013, how how would we go about initiating a conversation with them about looking into the possibility of reestablishing that connection? Is that a worthwhile venture to you know what's what's you know a big deal about reaching out to them and, and conversing with them on trying to you, you know try to get reunited on this process? Thank you. Mr. Kirby, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I think that. to your earlier point, we would be subsidizing them because we're the larger entity. So it might be beneficial for them to reach out to us, but I don't believe it would be beneficial for us to reach out to them. Then the second part of that issue is now you are trapped by their loss experience and not just your own. What do you mean by that, Mr. Kirby? Well, We're they're, trapped they're by gonna, there. Well, if you have one combined policy and we wrote this together, the insurance carrier is going to look at that total combined pool. So if we're bigger and we have less losses and they have a lot of losses, we're going to subsidize them 
versus them being able to offer a benefit to us. And we wouldn't have any control over how they manage safety, return to work, cost of their claims, things of that nature. Mr. Kirpin, I I really appreciate your expertise. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, please proceed with DEI 605-23 Advanced Placement Summer Institute. Sure, this is a, a, a contract with uh, Goucher College. It's a new sole source contract for um, AP Summer Institute for Office of College and Career Readiness. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $57,814. Um, and you have to obviously have to go through a, 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 um, an AP uh, uh, provider that is approved by the college board. So this is the um, the closest approved site by the college board. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, please present CWA-116-23 Technology Support Staffing Services. Yes, uh, this is a new competitively bid contract for technology support staffing services for the Division of Information Technology. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with 27 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $30 million. The contract will provide for uh, the following roles to support uh, students and staff, help desk technician, support technician two, field technician, help desk uh, team lead and network engineer. Are there any questions? I have some, Madam Chair. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, according to our contract exhibit, the vendor evaluations were completed March 15th. Is that correct? Yes. OK, um, could the board receive copies of those evaluations? Ms. Webster, I'm, I um, would. Yes. I will okay. um, I will coordinate that with you, Mr. Hartlove. Thank you. Perfect. Bye. And and those were for um, all of the current bidders. Are we are we're currently using all twenty seven or any of these new? We would have requested buyers. we would have requested um, evaluations on any on all of the bidders and we'll see what we were able to receive. Yeah, Melanie, I can speak. I know there were two incumbents um, who are no bidders uh, for this contract. OK. Good evening, Mr. Augusto. Good evening. Hi. Um, perhaps, sir, you could speak to the service level agreements for um, school support specifically, and is that something that would be would have been uh, included in the vendor evaluations? Is yeah, that something so, you could speak to, sir? Thank you. Well, I can speak to the service level agreements, and then I'll I'll turn it over to Melanie in terms of um, the bid process. So we have our internal, I'll call them. I mean, they're OLAs, but they're service level agreements with our customer base, which are um, our staff and students. Uh, so we are currently at uh, um, 48, 24 to 48 hour turnaround for repair, um, uh, for site visits, for equipment, for uh, any IT issues um, that would be specifically covered under this contract. Because this is field services, network services, uh, folks that are boots on the ground that go out to the schoolhouses and other um, buildings. Mm -hmm. OK, and what what are we tracking in term without getting too far into the weeds? Uh -huh. I assume we're tracking um, those performance metrics. Um, against we those are. service level. So, uh, yeah, and I can speak to this. So what we do from a internal uh, performance management for uh, the staff in these 
uh, from these vendors. We do look at um, return visits, so um, timeliness to get to the location, uh, rework that has to be done for work that was performed by the contract staff. So those kind of measures we're looking at for um, the staff, as well as whenever we do have openings, we do put out, um, we notify all of the bidders of um, the opportunity uh, to bid on a particular staff. And um, and then from there we get resumes. We re we evaluate the resumes and then we bring somebody on. Uh, it gives us a little bit more flexibility. Obviously, if we have performance issues, we can very quickly um, turn around staff working with the with the vendors. Okay, so oh, overall, though by vendor, we're we're capturing those overall metrics for. Um, response times correct and and we do have um doit does have meeting with the vendors to go over um contract performance okay and and am i, am I requesting the correct document then if the board wanted to review those performance measures against the slas you'll be requesting well what you've requested um were the evaluations the evaluations right which are uh, Melon, you can talk procurement process here, but or contract management. I'm sure you have those on a, a periodic basis. Uh, I don't know if it's annual um, contract evals. Though those evaluations would not get into the uh, the level of detail that Ms. Hen is asking about with the response, the the metrics for about response time. Our our capture of their if performance evaluation is is much more much broader just um how as a company how are they performing okay so miss hen what i will do is i will work with my team and any information that we can provide um will um as you put in a request through the superintendent's office and we can get information that we have that we can provide thank you so um let me restate what I'm asking for. Sure. I would like to see what are our contractual um, service level agreements with these vendors mm -hmm. and how are we measuring that and what are the measurements by vendor to support or refute a decision to continue to use these vendors. Okay. And whether that's captured in the evaluation or our performance management system, I, I would hope that they are aligned somehow, but it doesn't sound it sounds like those are two different things. So that's what the the board should see if if we're going to be making a data driven decision here. OK, if that helps yes. and let me know because I can clarify what what I'm looking for. Thank you very much and thank you, Ms. Webster as well. Thank you. Are there further questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, please present JMI 631-17, Information Technology Hardware. Okay. Another one in the technology area. Uh, this contract modification will provide for the continued purchase and lease to own of information technology hardware and software related to network operations for the Division of Information Technology, the Department of Facilities Management and Strategic Planning, the Department of School Safety and Schools. Uh, approval is requested to increase spending, uh, contract spending authority by $34,397,347, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $91,000,000. $576,084 with 39 awarded vendors approved by the board on June 13th, 2017. Are there questions? I have one, Madam Chair, but I'll I'll defer to the committee since <laughs> if they would like to ask their questions first. I I just have one quick question. I just want to make sure that this this uh modification is primarily due to new construction? Is uh, that no, what I'm it's, seeing? A, it's, it's a combination. Okay. It's a combination. So it is, um, this is the process we use to support the outfitting of all network equipment for new buildings, as well as um, the replacement of aging 
uh, network equipment, voice over IP phones, um, and, um, and that also includes the installation services with the with whatever equipment um, we're buying through the vendors. So it's across the board. It's not just new. It's not just uh, new buildings. And and uh, and just to add on to that, I I I should have pointed this out in one of his, in my overview. Uh, on the second page, there is a description. A fairly detailed description. If you go down to the fifth uh, bullet, um, it really goes into quite a bit of detail uh, as to what uh, the specifics are being spent um, with this contract. Thank you. Ms. Hen, please proceed with your question. Thank you. And thank you to Mr. Hartlove for pointing out those details as I had overlooked that, that additional information. That's very helpful. Um, my one question then for Mr. Augusto is, mm -hmm. is there a um, cost breakdown as we plan to migrate some of our infrastructure to cloud technologies? I, I would expect to see a migration of, of costs to a service model um, mm -hmm. for our infrastructure as we've discussed previously. And I think I ask this question every time we see um, an, an increase in in on-prem hardware costs, um, does that does such a plan exist, and is that something that could be provided to the board? Because I would yeah. expect to see that transfer of costs, not necessarily a reduction in overall costs, but I would expect to see that move from investments in an on-prem data center and those networking mm -hmm. investments to um, that cloud model. Are we still yeah. moving that direction? Yes, we are. And um, but specifically on this contract, the equipment that we're asking for here is the um, I'll, I'll, again, I'll use your term it's on prem networking equipment, but this is for the local building equipment. So regardless of whether we were um, on prem data center driven or working with applications in the cloud, we're still going to need this because this is the networking equipment that's going to allow the schoolhouses and other buildings to go out to the internet and mm -hmm. and be able to interact. So um, these are the wireless routers, uh, the wireless, sorry, um, access points that we have in schoolhouses, the routers yeah. that are going to be needed. So it's a little bit different, but you're absolutely so right. School um, on-prem, got school it on-prem. Um, we have seen a reduction in um, the amount of servers, yes, because of moving to the cloud. Um, our footprint at our data center um, in Kenwood and the data center as well in Towson has um, reduced dramatically because we've okay. just, we're, we're, you know, we're just down to a couple of racks in both of those locations because to your point, we've moved off of on-prem solutions to cloud base. Great. And, and are there any opportunities to partner with Baltimore County government on any um, solutions that we may need? Is that still we yeah kind of so we back have of our minds as an option? Yes, as yes, option? and okay. and we we meet on a regular basis with Baltimore County IT to go over items. Unfortunately, one of the limitations that we have is since we're using um, e-rate financing, we mm -hmm. have to have a separation. Um, mm -hmm of of uh, demarcation for our network and other supplies so it limits us as on to the ability to be able to do that we've to that point we actually have separate um networking and floor space in each of the data centers because of the e-rate uh, requirements okay thank you very much i'd You're love welcome. a tour of the data centers on a personal sure. note sometime <laughs> thank you very much appreciate yeah. it information. Are, are there any further questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. Our presenting will be Mr. Dixit. Please proceed with JB071. Am I in the right one? I'm sorry. Mr. Dixit, please proceed with GDA322-21 bottled water delivery. So good evening. Um, the next contract is for bottled water delivery. Um, we have been using bottled water for all schools and the request is to exercise our option of uh, renewing the contract for another year at a cost of $1 million. Uh, so 
uh, your approval is requested to change the amount to two million six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Are there any questions? Mr. McMillian? Yes, please. Mr. Please P, speak. you just mentioned that we use the bottled water at all the schools. Does that include the, the brand new schools? Yes, the provision to have the bottled water is for all schools, uh, including those schools that have been tested and found to be good, but we still continue to provide bottled water. We have not changed that policy. OK, so we have 176 schools. So even the schools that have opened up the last couple of years, they you we have bottled water on those sites for those kids. That's correct. That's correct. And why is that? Why aren't you know the the pipes and all and these brand new schools have to be, you know, the water has to be good in those schools, right? Yeah, so the water is good and uh, so that's a policy change that at some point board has to make. We have continued to follow uh, whatever the communities wanted, whatever the schools wanted, but it is it is there. We don't require that every school purchase it. It is a, still a school based decision, but most of the schools that I know of still get bottled water. OK. So we've got 176 schools. We're using bottled water. Last week we got a report that we had constituents calling us saying that Delaney didn't have water Thursday and Friday. Didn't have bottled water. It's, is so, that a possibility? Well, the po the possibility could be due to logistical issues. It's not that we do not provide. Uh, the, the water is ordered by the school, school administration, and there may be cases when it was not ordered on time or the delivery person didn't deliver it on time. Whenever we hear about that, we follow up and we support the school in any way we can to expedite delivery. And I noticed that the, the vendor that got contracts in Connecticut, correct? Stanford, yes. Connecticut. So yes. they'd have to have a distribution center someplace in the Baltimore area, wouldn't they? That's my understanding. OK, and what's the so I've, I've been at a couple of schools where they had the principal took money out of their budget and they bought some of these water fountains and had them installed that have filtering systems in these in these water fountains. Are we looking at that as a long term solution or is this something that you know you project that we're going to do you know forever even in the new schools is provide water? So no policy decision has been made along those lines. Right now, only thing I can share with you is that we make bottled water available to all schools. Initially, you are right when we started. It was because of the concern related to water quality. It was because of the concern that some schools were not air conditioned. And we continued it because the threshold for testing was lowered and approximately 86 schools out of that meet all requirements that we know of. Uh, there are nine schools where we will continue to provide bottled water because uh, they are either on well water or for other reasons. And there are 74 schools uh, where some uh, fountains or some devices are still being repaired to meet the required uh, requirements of the testing. Yeah. Now I know that you've given the board, you know, several different presentations, updates on your water management uh, analysis. Do you have one planned for us in the near future? So the board agenda is not decided by us. This that's between the board and the superintendent. Okay. So uh, that's all okay. I can say. Okay. Thank you very much for answering my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Uh, I would just like to uh, reiterate that the the notion, uh, I'm surprised to hear that even in our new schools, we're not having a uh, water bottle filling stations with the internal filtration systems, particularly because our schools are greener and uh, more environmentally friendly. You mentioned the policy 
that we provide water, water was established because there was concern about water quality and the lack of air conditioning. I would hope that we would look to updating that policy given the current circumstances of our schools. The fact that we're having all schools be air conditioning, that we're having newer buildings, that we're fixing uh, issues related to water quality. So yes, you are absolutely right. There's more conversation needed at the board level. Um, it started because of the concerns raised in board meeting uh, and, and uh, if there's any change that has to be made there. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting JBO-717-23 facility MRO industrial and building related supplies and equipment. So this request is a consent to the reassignment of this contract from SIT Tool Company to SIT Tool Company Incorporated DBA MSC Industrial Supply Company. Uh, there are five other award contractors on the original contract approved by the board um, on January 10th, 2023. There is no change in the amount and there are no other changes uh, that is being requested. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please present KSH 305-19 uniforms and personal protective equipment. So this contract will provide for the continued purchase of personal protective equipment for the facility support services and transportation. Approval is requested to increase the contract spending authority by 85,000, bringing the revised total to 435,000 to the two contractors that were already approved by the board. My understanding is that when we look at the future spending patterns, additional amount is needed to meet the needs. Are there any questions? I just have a, a, a brief question. When you say to meet the needs, is it because we have expanded staff? Is it because the cost of the supplies has gone up? Some combination? It's all of that. Um, so uh, there are new employees at times they need that and the costs have gone up but just about everything that we buy these days the costs have gone up uh, including this item thank you are there any further questions hearing none mr dixit please proceed with contract jbo 71223 drain cleaning and associated services so this is a new competitively bid contract for cleaning, inspection, and repair of storm drains, roof drains, sanitary lines, and grease traps for different schools. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with five recommended bidders with a total cost of $500,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with contract ARA-200-19 on-call fencing services. So this contract will provide for the continuous, uh, continued on-call fencing services. Um, approval is requested to extend the contract for three months with three awarded vendors. No change in dollar amount is needed. This will allow for time to purchasing for a new solicitation. Are there any questions? Th Dr. Harvey, I had a question for, for Mr. Pete about the drain cleaning and I couldn't get my camera and I couldn't get situated here. Can I ask him that question real quick? Please proceed. Mr. Dixon, are you aware that in the back of Chesapeake High School, there is a terracotta drain that has collapsed and it runs 
there's a there's a big ditch. And then what happens, the, the way they solve this problem is they come along and dump a load of sand in it or dirt in it. And then before you know it, it washes away. It's been that way for years. Is that something that would fall under this contract? Is repairing that drain line? Because it really is a safety hazard. So I'm not um, familiar with the specifics that you're talking about, but I'll be glad to look into it. The, this contract can be used for that. But most of the time we uh, use that contract for. Um, you're talking about the. Not the fencing one, but the one before that, right? For the, yeah, the, the, drain the cleaning. Yeah, the cleaning, the cleaning. One. There's yeah. a storm. It's a storm drain that runs. And, and it's been that way for years, it really has. Yeah. And so and it just washes away and then you got a big hole again. Yeah, so what you're describing, it appears to be a collapse drain, and I yes. can look at it, but mainly we use it for uh, for clogged drains to clean it up. Uh, can it be used for, for replacing a drain? Perhaps yes, but we'll have to look at it to develop a scope of work and understand the job better, and I'll be more than glad to do it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pete. Uh -huh. Thank you. Are there any questions or discussion regarding ARA-200-19 on-call fencing services. Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting CWA-102-22 custodial cleaning and restroom products. So this requires a little bit of background information. The request is to increase the amount of this contract by 13,954,850. Um, it appears that the original contract approval uh, was for not the correct amount of our needs. Uh, our needs are in the range of uh, 3 million or 3.5 million every year. So we are asking to increase the limit of this contract to meet our needs. Mr. McMillian, you have a question? Yes. Mr. Pete, we approved this on, in, in less than a year ago in June of 14. That's June right. 14 to 20 for $3 million. So, in, have, so our needs have tripled or? Is no. It tri no, let me, let me clarify one more time. When the amount was used for whatever reason, we used one year amount, it appears, and not for the entire term of the contract. So we are, we are spending a two to three million dollars every year. OK, and it runs yeah. through 27. That's right. OK, thank you very much. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed to contract NGO-400-23 wood floor refinishing, replacement, repairs and relining. So this is a new competitively bid contract to provide uh, on-call wood flooring repair and replacement services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with three recommended bidders uh, with a spending authority of a million dollars, which, which comes to $200,000 a year. Are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting contract ARA-218-18, on-call inspection, maintenance, repair, and installation of physical education facilities and equipment. So this contract is to request an additional $143,000 uh, for continued inspection, maintenance, repair, and installation of physical educational facilities and equipment at different schools. So the original contract was 870,000. The new request, $143,000 addition, will bring the total amount to $1,013,000. Are there any questions?
There being no further questions, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 16 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Rod McMillian. Is there a second? Second, Ms. Hen. Thank you, Mr. McMillian and Ms. Hen. Uh, we will now take a roll call vote. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Faya, please call the roll. Thank you, Ms. Hardy. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. There being three in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one through 16 will be moved forward to the full board. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held on Monday, May 1st, 2023 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for your participation and commitment to BCPS. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.